So today I'm going to talk to you about how to web scrape without using any code using Microsoft Power Automate, which comes free with Microsoft 365 in this base version. Uh, there is a premium version. One caveat to this is that it only currently works with Microsoft Windows computers. So if you have a Mac, you will not be able to use this methodology. But in the future, I'll show how you can web scrape using things like Python. Uh, but it's a little bit more involved. And this is very friendly, uh, even if you have no coding background. So the first thing you do is you would go and add new flow. I've already created a new flow, uh, which is what this window is here. Um, and when you create a new flow, you can see all sorts of actions you can do. And then when we start pulling actions over, it'll go into this main window. So today, what we're actually going to be showing you what how to do is web scrape data from LinkedIn. Um, and I'm just going to pull up my LinkedIn window now. Uh, the goal of this is to pull information from maybe someone who has a position that we're interested in. So I'm going to look up medical science liaison. I'm going to narrow it to people. And then you see there's 39,000 results. Maybe you're not interested in all medical science liaisons, but maybe you want to filter it by someone who has gone to the same university as you, uh, just so you have that kind of in common. So if you wanted to reach out to them and be like, hey, well, if we went to the same university, how did you become an MSL? Um, you could do that. So I'm going to filter that by University of Michigan. And now we see we have about 300 results of different individuals who have medical science liaison somewhere in their title. Uh, sometimes it's not always a perfect match. So you're going to get people who might not be MSLs, but you could clean those out once you have this data all imported into a nice spreadsheet. So uh, talking about spreadsheets, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to write a program that will come onto LinkedIn, pull the person's name, link to their LinkedIn profile, their current title, their location, and then uh, what other whatever information that they have um, that matches our search. So here it says current MSL at whatever com uh, whatever uh, company. Um, sometimes it will say past um, in there. So like this person is past um, clinical pharmacist at Sinai Health System. So uh, we're going to pull out that information um, from all of these 300 profiles and put it into an Excel sheet. So then we can have all that information in one place. All right, so let's get started. Let's go back over to our flow. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to make a connection with a browser. So let's come over here and we're going to do launch new Chrome. And you just drag this over here and it will start to give you options. So we're going to launch a new instance. And now we need to go get the instance URL. So let me pull up Chrome again. And I'm going to go ahead and just scroll to the second page. And the reason I'm doing this is because once you go off the first page in LinkedIn, it will automatically um, add in something within the URL where we can uh, then be able to increment the page. So you get page equals two here. Uh, for some reason on the first page, it doesn't always pop up, but um, that's what we want in the link so that we can um, make sure that our algorithm goes all the way through all the pages. The second thing we're going to have to do is use a URL decoder. Um, and this is because there are certain characters that are not allowed in Power Automate. So uh, particularly the percentage signs are uh, references to variables in Power Automate, so it messes it up. Um, but there are a bunch of different websites that will decode it for us and remove those illegal characters. So this looks good now. Let's copy and paste it over to our Power Automate instance. So we can go over here with the URL. These are some other things you could change it so that maximize, minimize. We're just going to do normal and then press save. And something I forgot to mention is you're going to want to make sure you're already logged into LinkedIn when you run this. Um, so it's not a problem if you had to go manually find the page that you're looking for that you wanted to go and increment um, and then save to Excel. Um, but for some reason, if you started up brand new and you weren't logged into LinkedIn, you'd get some errors. All right, let's click run just to show you what it's going to do. So hit run. It's going to tell you that it's running. And then here we go. It pulled up uh, the exact page I had before. Great. So I'm just going to minimize this for a second and X out of this other one. And the next thing we're going to do is actually use this recorder to tell this workflow what information we want to pull. So if you've ever used macros in Excel, this is really similar. So let's go ahead and click on it. It's going to pull up the sub window where you can tell uh, when to record, pause the recording, and so on. And it will bring up what is going to be recorded uh, or a preview of what's going to be recorded there. 
So I'm just going to bring my page up now so it's ready. Um, and then I'm going to click record. Now let's see what information we want to pull over. So you notice if you hover over things, it will highlight it in red. You can then right click, extract an element, and I want this text. So let's pull that text over. And then something else we're going to do is uh, go ahead and do the same action on the next in individual. And Power Automate will automatically catch on that you want this process to be repeated uh, for all the elements on the page. So you now see that everything, all the names are highlighted in that green box. And this is really similar to uh, Flash Fill and Excel. Uh, but now it knows every time we select a new piece of information from a profile or entry um, that we want it to be collected for every person on that page. Um, I forgot to mention this, but now you can see that it's um, extracting that data and storing it in a variable. So let's pull some other information. Say we want the profile information. Let's hover over this until we see the anchor, right click, extract element value, and the href has the link to their profile. So let's click on that. And then you see it's applied to all of the downstream entries. All right, now let's pull their current position according to their LinkedIn page. Pull that text. Um, let's pull their current location. And then let's also pull whatever else is on this page. So more text. That looks good. We have a five column table with all of that information that we've pulled from each profile, which is their name, their LinkedIn, uh, the web address for their LinkedIn profile, their title, location, and then any other information that they shared on their profile. Click done. And I'll bring us back to this page and you can see um, it will list what has been generated by the auto recorder. So I'm going to delete this one because this is an extra instance of the web page. You just right click delete. And now let's go ahead and demo this. Let's click run. It'll pull up this page. Um, and then let's go back. And we can preview that data now. So let's click on the preview. Oops. View. And we can see the name is value one. Their address is value two. Um, but value three, four, and five are empty. So something that sometimes happens is um, you'll have to go in here and edit, um, and you'll need to process the data upon extraction. And then I'm actually going to make the timeout a little bit longer just in case my internet's really slow. Um, and you could also alternatively go ahead and save this in an Excel spreadsheet, but we're going to save it to a variable because that's going to make our compilation of the Excel sheet a little bit easier. So let's save. Let's run this again. Let's go back here. And let's take a look at the data. And now we have that data filled out. Um, it just required that extra entry into processing the data. Um, and this all looks good. All right. So now the next thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we can increment between all the pages. So uh, as we noticed, there's 30 pages, each with about 10 entries. Um, and we're going to do this using a loop. So if you're familiar with programming, you probably use loops. If you're not familiar with programming, it's really simple. Essentially, what this is going to do is we're going to tell it what web page we want to start on, what web page you want to go to, and what to increment by, which will be one in this instance. Um, loops are really flexible. They don't have to necessarily um, be full integers. Um, but in the case of web pages, that would be a whole uh, number. So this is how we will set it up. And it creates a variable called loop index, and that's how we're going to increment our web pages. Let's save this. Let's move this inside the loop. And then we're going to have to add another browser function to be able to go to new web pages. So I'm going to really quickly, before I pull that over, just copy the link that we have in here. And then we're going to use a browser function called go to web page. I'm going to drag that over here. And you can paste that URL in. And now, remember, I called out that we needed this to come up in the URL, the page number. Instead of two, we're going to insert our increment variable. So every time the loop index changes, or the, every time the loop is iterating, um, it will change that number in this go to web page. And that's how we're going to go to each web page and then extract the data. The next thing we want to do is format this so that it will save the data in Excel. 
Um, so we are going to add a launch Excel after uh, or before the loop. And then we're going to have it go to the web page, extract the data, and then we're going to want to write the data to an Excel worksheet. And the value you're going to write is the output data. Um, and then we're going to start in column A. Um, and ideally, we're going to have to come back to this, um, the first row. Uh, and we're going to want the first three row or column so we can add a thing or a step in the function that will look for the first three row. Um, and then we can tell the right function to write to that. So let's remove the one and we're going to put in first three row. And this is just because uh, every increment is going to have 10 entries and we need this flow to understand that it wants to append the new data to the same worksheet, but it has to find where the old data ends. So that's what first three row is doing. Okay, so this looks good. Um, I am gonna also add something in here called a weight. Um, and this is just telling the uh, algorithm to pause for a set amount of time. So here I'm gonna do eight seconds. Um, and this is useful sometimes when you're web scraping because if you don't have this weight, um, it'll realize that you are in automation process and sometimes will uh, kind of flag you as uh, a robot. Uh, so you always know like those things that pop up and like you have to say, oh, I'm not a robot. Essentially doing processes too fast can also flag you uh, as a robot. So to get LinkedIn not to mistake us for a robot, we're gonna have it pause after each loop. Um, You'll learn when you do more web scraping that some websites have specific rules for uh, how many times you can query or search on that page. Um, um, but anyways, uh, back to this, we're gonna wanna add a save an Excel file so you can save all your data. Um, so save Excel, um, you save document as, and then you're gonna wanna tell it a path. I'm going to do this folder for me, and then this is going to be MSO. So that looks good. And then you could close Excel and close the browser, but I'm just going to leave it there uh, for now. And I think we're ready to run. So I'm going to hit run. And it kind of highlights what step it's on. So now it's going to the web page, extracting the data, waiting. And now it's incrementing, waiting, and keep uh, going. Um, if I pull up, here's the page where it's searching. And you'll see it'll update as it finishes pulling the data. There it goes it's on the next page. And this will take a while to run because it's going through 30 different pages um, and pulling the data. And here we go. It should be just about done now. Um, and it is done. That took about five minutes. Let's go ahead and open the spreadsheet uh, and take a look. So it's spaced weird. Let me just pull this out and then re-space everything. And there we go. Um, we pulled the name, the profile, their title, location, and then uh, this we'd have to clean a little bit, but it will give their current or past um, matches with your search um, keywords. And just to show you, it's done it for the 395 or 295 individuals that we uh, came up during our search. I'm just going to scroll all the way down. You can see that it was successful in pulling all the information and now it's all in one nice spreadsheet for you. And you could go in and kind of analyze what their titles are, uh, what their location is, and then what whether or not they actually have a title that perfectly matched your search so making sure they have medical science liaison or maybe clinical or healthcare marketing liaison is fine um you could go and write excel functions to just check that that field appears in one of the columns that is 
been pulled from LinkedIn. But there you go. That's how you can pull data really easily from LinkedIn. So if you have a set of individuals that you know you can filter out on LinkedIn, you can easily uh, get that into Excel using Power Automate. So hopefully this has been helpful um, and can really speed up some of your workflows, especially if you're trying to compile information um, that's publicly available on LinkedIn. So thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you next time and maybe in some tutorials on how to do this using uh, Python. Thanks.